Welcome to Cool to Craft. I'm Tiffany Windsor. And I'm Heidi Borchers. And we're warming up with some tea. In the middle of the summer, it's foggy here and it's cold. It is cold this morning. Our message today is mixed messages. Are you giving me a mixed message? <laughs> <laughs> mixed media is so popular right now. We decided to combine that into secret messages. No, not secret. <laughs> well, they're not secret anymore. <laughs> what are you doing on today's show? I have a mixed media, mixed message um, love. It's a screen. It's got all kinds of collaging. It's lots of fun. It's recycled. Mm -hmm. It is. And Candace Jedrowitz is going to perform some engineering today. This is a kinetic mixed media piece, and that's a big word, but she's going to take all the mystery out of creating this piece piece which actually turns. I'm excited to see that. And remember when we were kids and we played button button who's got the button? Oh, 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 oh. oh I have it. You're not Shh. supposed to say that. <laughs> I'm the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> so my project is about combining mixed media with buttons and uh, turning them into little message pieces. So it's a fabulous show. Don't go away. Mixed messages. Well, that's a combination of mixed media, which is so popular right now, mm -hmm. which I just call general crafting. I was going to say, isn't it just crafting on top of crafting on top of crafting? It's the crafting as we knew it, but of course the paper crafters and scrapbookers mm -hmm. have coined that mm -hmm. as their word and, <laughs> and phrase, so mixed media. We've decided to do a little play on it today and we have mixed messages. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. I do. I love to, to layer all those different um, products and, and make a, make things. It's, it's lots of fun. And so you have this fabulous screen that you're going to show us how to make. And when Heidi talked about layering and how much fun it is, she kept going and going <laughs> and going. I, did. I thought it was going to be this really quick project and I could just put it really quick. Because I, I did um, cereal boxes is my base. And I thought, oh, I'll just do it quick, quick, quick. It took me like all day. I kept going and going and going. And finally, I had to say, well, it's addictive. It is. To keep going oh, and going and going. And I could also, if I wanted to, I could continue. I could do it on the back. Mama Aline <laughs> would tell you, you always need to finish your work on the back. I didn't finish it for a reason because I wanted to show you that it was cereal box. I didn't want you to think that I was, was lying to you. It is cereal box that I put it on. Would you lie to us? No. <laughs> <laughs> so can we see how you made this? Sure can. To make each panel, you're going to need a piece of cereal cardboard, and it's three and a half by, I think, six. And also you need a piece of your um, scrapbooking paper that's about a half inch larger all the way around. Now, I really like to use the uh, spray tacky to put it onto the, the cardboard. So what I do is I just spray, 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 spray outside. And then I just put it down onto my paper and it holds very quickly. And that's what I have here. Now I've cut the corners and I've bent it in. And then because this scrapbooking paper is a little bit heavier, I take the Aline's Tacky Glue and put some glue on this edge. And I take a piece of cardboard and squeegee it out. And then glue it each corner. Now remember, you're gonna for each uh, letter of your word, you're gonna make one of these panels. So, like for my love, I made four panels. Oops. Make sure you get enough glue because, like I said, some of the scrapbooking paper is a little bit heavier in it tends to want to come up. And then you probably want to cover the other side of this too. So this is our front side. 
The first thing we want to do is we want to put in some holes for our um, eyelets because we're going to hook it onto the sticks with eyelets. So I measured down, oh, probably about an inch. And this is the hole. Press. Mine's just a hand one. I know there's all kinds of different ones that you can get. And then we can poke that out. Usually it goes all the way through. Try it one more time. Is it coming through? There it is. There's our hole. Now I changed, this is the little hole punch, so I changed to the pressing one, get an eyelet, and then just simply push really hard on the eyelet. And there you have your eyelet, and this is the front side. So you would do that uh, on both the top and the bottom about an inch in. Next I thought, you know, when I was making this, I really wanted a lot of different textures. I wanted a lot of different heights, a lot of different mixed media. So the next thing I did was I used some Texture Magic, which is a dimensional paint. And I used a stencil. And I'll just show you really quickly the technique that I used. Take some of your Texture Magic. And just hold your stencil and just go over the top. You don't want to you don't want to squish too much off because you want that texture. This is dimensional paint, so when you lift it, you can see. Can you see the texture? I really like the texture. So this is almost dry down here. I'm going to wipe that, um, the stencil off really quick because I want to show you if you put the stencil back on, see if we can fit it back on where I had this dry. Yeah. And then if you put it back on, this is what I did earlier, and then you do your painting. And again, you can just take acrylic paint or you can take like rub and buff. I have a little bit of acrylic paint on here and a burgundy and just kind of tap it in with that stencil right back over your dried uh, texture, your dried, yeah, your dried texture magic, which is a dimensional paint. Now, if you just wanted to stencil and you didn't want to use the dimensional paint, you could do that. But I really like to have that different, that bigger layer. And then, because I put the stencil right back over where I had first put it on, there you have one of your layers. So I would do that on the background here. And I might do it like in a corner, corner. I'd start laying everything out. Now I found that my, my papers, again, like I said, were really heavy. So a lot of times what I did when I went to use my... Um, collage posh is I peel off the back so I had a thinner uh, piece of paper. If, it, if you don't want to do that, then use the, um, use the tacky glue. And I'm going to put a little bit of collage posh out here and we're going to put some on the back here of this paper. And this is how I layered my papers. On the back, you're going to put it on the back of your, your, your background. Put your paper into the background and then put a layer over. It's always on the background, on the paper, and then over. And I have some other pieces here. Well, also, the, the mulberry tissue paper works fabulous. I love the texture. It's kind of like a rice paper. And 
I liked, on my first panel, I had it really straight, and I realized I didn't like that straightness, so I went right off the, I liked it where it was right off the end. So I would just leave that. So you could just keep adding uh, any of your pieces. Now, if you want to add letters, like I did, these are the cool to cast letters. They come like this, or you can get them in um, black. You can buy them um, online at shopcooltocraft.com. You can paint them with acrylic paints. You can spray paint them. And that's what I did as I spray painted them. And then I took the edges and I painted around the edges. And I'll show you that in a minute. But we, al we also have some flowers, some roses. Here's one. This is the one I actually used for the O. And then you just paint it. Now also, don't forget that you can use um, wire in your little wire curlies in your um, background, in your mixed media, and all you do is just take and bend your wire into a little swirl. And I like to add lots of these on the background. See how that's forming? And then I would just glue it on the background with a little bit of the Aline's Techie glue on the back of it. Now I want to show you just really slowly we're going to go through, go, go over the piece. So here's my sticks. Down here is where I have my eyelet. To attach it to the stick, I brought some of the wire through with a little bit of the beads on it. Here you can see my wire swirl. You can see where I stacked all different kinds of, of paper. Here is my dimensional paste, my um, texture magic. My letters I wrapped in wire. And then as another added feature, I put some glue here, and this was the Aleem's Tacky Glue, and I just sprinkled some of the little seed beads that I had and the micro uh, marble beads that I had. And then there's a bead here. But, and here you can see the dimensional. I've gone off the edge. And I did find in my studio a really cool piece of ribbon that said love. And it had a little definition. I think this was from Seven Gypsies. And just I was just going to slowly go over so you can see all the different features. Here's the rose before. And there's the rose after. I sprayed it gold and then I put some maroon paint over it to tone it down. And that's what I used for my O. Here again you can see the texture. I used a uh, metal leaf here. And here's where I put it together with some beads. And even added a few tiles here to give it some more texture. It went off the edge. And all the way to the end here, I found a little heart in my um, mosaic things. Now I want to turn it over just a bit too, so you can see the back. Now again, I should have covered it. I wanted to show you that it is definitely the cereal um, cardboard. See, and this is the wire that's holding it together. Turn it over one more time so you can see it. And there you have it, a mixed media screen that tells your message and you can look at it every day. All right, I have two questions. Okay. The first one is where do you get the sticks? Okay, I bought those sticks online. They came a couple different sizes, but I have in my other projects just gone out to the yard and picked up little twigs, and you can do the exact same thing, just oh, sticks or twigs. That would be neat because you could have some really interesting design mm -hmm. to curving those sticks. Right, you just would do the same thing that I did. You would, you know, put your eyelets in the place that it would connect to the stick that you have. The second question is, you talked about the paper, like tearing the paper, and I wasn't clear about that. Oh, okay. You mean like separating it? Yes. Okay, okay. The paper today has, a lot of it has two sides, where you have uh, one on one, and then you have another um, pattern on the other side. 
So what you do is you just simply, I kind of take my fingernail and just separate it and then I just pull it apart and it's, it's fairly easy. You won't always get it perfect, but that's okay. But that gives you a much thinner um, piece of paper so you can actually collage with it. If you don't use it that way, you really have to glue it, like with the Aline Tacky Glue. You can't use the collage podge, the Aline's collage podge. When you have really thick, it's really heavy. That is a great hint. Mm -hmm. And then that way you can use both sides because otherwise you're gluing you know, one side down and, and you've, lost, you've lost that pattern so you can use both sides. Cool. I know. <laughs> So next we want to talk about the project that Candace J is making today and I, I used the word engineering just a moment ago because what she has done is engineered a kinetic wall hanging. Do you know what that means? I don't. <laughs> well you're going to learn right now. So we're delighted to welcome the Creative Play Muse. It's Candace J. Hello. Did I surprise you? <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a kinetic construction with a heart. Hold on to your hats, because here we go. I'm going to show you how you can make a turning mechanism for any art project. To make a wheel like this one, you will need some foam core board. I've cut an eight and a half inch circle here. It could be any size, any size at all that you like, or probably any shape that you like. And then you'll need a couple of extra pieces. One will glue to this side, and the other will glue to the back of your piece. Now, the pivot point of this whole project, this whole mechanism, is this 3 8 of an inch piece of a watercolor brush protector. Yep, that's all. So let's put that right in the hole that I made in the back of the, well, all the way through the circle and then you will fit that down and you'll glue it just like that and then I have a button with a 20 gauge wire about 8 inches folded in half that goes through the shank of this button. Now what I would like to show you about this part of it is that the shank extends beyond the back of the button right there and if I left it like that and just put the wire through the shank is too large to go into the tube and so the button would stay outside of it and kind of flop around every time you turned it so I put washers on and if you have the right size washers you can use any kind of button at all and I built up to where the wires go through. I think that's going to work. Now, you'll put it through the front of your wheel. And pull it hot. Get it nice and tight there. Oh, I might need one more. Oh no, there it is. You can see that it's now sitting very still on there and it's not going to flop around when I turn the mechanism just like that. Now, you want to add a couple more washers just to help you with the movement of it. It'll keep it smoother. If the foam core board were to warp a little bit, it might not want to turn as nicely without the help of a couple more washers. So then you'll need to put it through to the back and since I'm going to use another button to secure the wire and keep it tight I kind of traced around it and cut a little divot for it because you'll want this to sit flat. The reason for that is you're going to want to glue it onto the base of your project. Oh, 
oh my goodness. See how easy that is? Holy cow! That is easy. Here's how you make a slinky. Wrap some wire, any size wire that you want to use. This is fairly large so you can see it. Around a bottle, nice and tight. And then when you take it off, you'll want to kind of slide it to the side a little bit. And what you're doing here is creating a less dimensional piece so that now this will lay down on your paper. And then you'll want to thread some beads on and move them down as you go. Whoop, that one got away. <laughs> you don't have to have beads on every ring. Um, you could have many beads on every ring. It's all up to you. And then when you get finished beading your slinky, you'll want to find a bead that has a fairly large hole. I think this works and you're going to slide it around your ring and as you do you're going to come up to where your wire starts and you're going to want to slide the end of that wire in and that will hold the end and then when you're done you remember how your sleeping used to get tangled up well you'll do it just the same way you'll come around and you will grab a couple of loops together like that. Like that. Wait, like that? No, no, wait. Like that? No. All right, anyway. <laughs> That's how you make a slinky for a project. Quick recap. You started with a circle of foam core board and two squares. You put a hole through all three of them, the last one gets a smaller hole. You put about three-eighths of an inch of a brush cover into the hole in the first two pieces. You glued them together, you threaded a wire onto a button, and you pulled it through all the way to the last one and secured it with a button. You did not glue the first square to the second square because they need to be movable. You glued the back square onto your background. And then you embellished. You're welcome to use this phrase, which I just love. Choose colors that mean something to you. Choose shapes that mean something to you. They don't have to be buttons. They could be other words or symbols. The outer mechanism, the beads are very simple, just using head pins and beads and buttons. And the buttons are offset a little bit, which I like because it's kind of whimsical. So that, the, and the reason that you choose the things that are significant to you is that every time you look at it, you want to be right there again. You want to be in that place where you said, I want to be reminded of hope. I want to be reminded of love or any, any other kind of message that you want to have for yourself and hang this on your wall, touch it every time you go by, and say the words, or think the, the words. Think about the meaning, and that brings you back to that hope every time. I love my kinetic construction. I love the colors, I love the way it feels. I love all the meanings in it. I hope that you're inspired to try it, slinky or not. I hope that if you do try it, I get to see it. Email me at Candace at CoolToCraft.com. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to see what you're working on. And remember, stay crafty, my friends. So now do you know what kinetic means? I certainly do. That is a very cool project. I love how that turns around and it adds more intrigue to her mixed messages. And it intrigues me to make something like that too. She's mm -hmm. inspired me. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Button, button. Who's, Who's got, got the, button? the button? Did you play that when you were kids 
or was it just our family? Where did that come from? We played it when we were. Well, little. you're a part of my family. I'm asking them. <laughs> I don't know. It was a, it was an older game, mm -hmm. and you had a whole bunch of people in a circle, and you just went around like this with your button, and then you didn't know who dro who dropped the button. I mean. The person that was dropping the button, you didn't know where they dropped it. The drop B and the drop or. Yeah. <laughs> so buttons. <laughs> you know, it took me a couple of weeks to decide what I wanted to make for today's show. I love buttons. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, Heidi's the one who inspired me because I knew you would enjoy this. But do you ever have this design challenge where you just get stuck? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was getting stuck and here's what I did. I went to my stash. I have those plastic square containers mm -hmm. and I just started looking in them saying what what do I want to make what do I want to make and the buttons they just popped out at me and I thought okay what can I do with the buttons that happens to me all the time <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to show you how I transform just plain buttons into mixed messages cool Here's a quick idea for creating a thank you box. The first thing that you will want to gather is some fabric. I'm using buttons on mine. A little metal box. You'll need glue and stickers. Now I'm using stickers today from SRM Press. And these are great because they just peel right off and stick on to your craft projects. The fabric that I'm using is a piece of scrap that was left over from a project that Heidi created on the Cool to Craft fabric show. So when I saw this in her stash, I knew I wanted to create with this. What she did is glued some pieces of scrap fabric together along with some yarn. So I'm going to utilize this area of this fabric scrap. To measure to size for my box, I just want to place that face down and line it up so that the fabric pattern design that's on the other side is exactly where I want it placed on my box. I just use a pencil to draw my pattern. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell me where to apply my glue because I want to apply glue first so that my fabric doesn't fray. All right, that looks good. I'm using the Aline's Stop Fraying Glue and this pre prevents fabrics and trims from unraveling so it's perfect to put right over that line and then I run my finger to spread it out. I just need a real smooth light coat of glue so I can still see my cutting line but when I go to cut it's going to keep this fabric from unraveling. The next step is to let this set for about 10 to 15 minutes until this glue dries enough that you can actually cut. So we're going to set this aside. The glue is dry and what I did is I took a hair dryer to speed up the process of drying that glue. And now that it's clear, I can see that that means it's dry. And you can also just tap your finger into it and see if it's still sticky. What I want to do now is cut to the inside of our pattern line. That way I know it's going to fit on the top of the box. And since I used the Aline Stop Fraying, it's great because then the edge of this I can cut and it's going to keep a nice crisp edge. All right, so now we have the top. I'm going to double check just to make sure my measurements were correct. That looks great. 
So next we're going to apply our Lean's Original Tacky Glue. And I like to use the technique that Eco Heidi taught us, which is using a squeegee to smooth that glue out. I'm going to go ahead and open up the lid because I want a little bit more glue to come out than what I would just get through the end of the nozzle. And I lay it on to a surface that I can easily clean up like this cutting mat or you can certainly put this on to paper because when you start squeegeeing it that glue is going to come off the sides. I'm going to spread this around just a little bit more here. I also have a wet wipe so I can keep my squeegee clean. So pull it along and that gives you a nice even coat of glue. It's important on this that you get it all the way out to the edge. Now that I have one side covered, I move this to a clean spot on my work surface. Add a little bit more glue. Let me wipe this off here. Add a little bit more glue on to the fabric and squeegee again. Quick and easy way to apply glue to back of fabric or paper that gives you a nice even coat. And now I can just lay this right on the top of my little gift box. What I love about this is that if you create some of this fabric in advance, it's really easy then to have just pull it out of your stash, have it ready to glue on little giveaway boxes like this. I like to make these boxes up in advance so that I have them already made up to this step and then ready to personalize with my message depending on the occasion. The other thing that you will want to do, and also make sure you run your fingers all around the outside edge to make sure that that fabric is glued down securely. The other thing that you're going to want to do is uh, put some fabric into the inside of your box. So in order to do that, you just need to trace the bottom of the box onto the piece of fabric. Do the same thing using the Aline Stop Fraying Glue. You can run a line of glue along the edge, cut it out, and glue it to the inside of your box. What I did to create the message is I pulled out some of my Blumenthal Lansing buttons and as I mentioned I am using stickers from SRM and I'm using the back of one of these and what's cool about this is that it doesn't matter that this is not round because what you can do is just cut it to shape. So I'm lining this up, and as you can see, you're seeing the holes right in the middle of the buttons there, and that's okay. That didn't bother me. But what I do want to do is get it straight, so let me pull it back up a little bit. I'm going to turn it towards me so I can make sure it's straight. There we go. Use my finger to press that down. And I just use my scissors to round out those corners. So now I have my message right on my button. These are cute just like this, but I love to use my gloss over the top. And that's the 3D crystal lacquer. You can tell this is my bottle. I have my name on it. And I just use my 3D to go right over the top. And you're going to let this set overnight so that that glaze dries completely. Set it someplace where it's not going to get disturbed at all. No dust, no fingerprints, but fill all of that in and set it aside to dry overnight. Another way that you can use the stickers and the button is on this one, this has an indentation that this little design 
fit almost perfectly into. So I'm just pressing that in. Press it down. Make sure it adheres all the way around. And then you just fill this up with your 3D gloss. So when this dries, then it's completely clear and is perfect to use on the top of your little gift box. So we might want to put a hugs message on the top or just a flower design if you want to keep it a little bit more generic. But what you want to do is fill the inside of your gift box with little trinkets. Now, I know my sister loves buttons, so I'm going to put together a little button collection for her here inside this box as a thank you gift. I also picked up some vintage buttons. We're going to add those into our little thank you gift. If you have a little treasure, like this is my little cool to cast, this is a, a pendant, I might want to put that in there so she has a little gift to wear. And we get to say thanks a bunch. So would you like some mixed message buttons? I could put it on my mixed media. Yes, you can. <laughs> and then we'll mix it up. <laughs> it's been so much fun to tackle the mixed media from mixed messages. But what's so funny is where it originally came from too. I mean, this has really evolved from the original assignment. That's what's, that's what's really fun. Well, is it because I gave you, it became a bigger challenge? Uh, a bigger project. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's just because I did that. I mean, the, I just... Because originally it was, it was the topic of hope. And so then I decided, well, I want to make it broader than mm -hmm. that and do all sorts of messages and words. Yeah. And so you had a lot of fun. I did. I did. I really had the, I really went through the studio and got all kinds of things and made my project. Well, let's go ahead and recap today's show and you can describe <laughs> your project. I made a mixed media screen that, with a message of love, used all kinds of things from the studio. Uh, cereal box made it a little bit more eco so that... Uh, um, that was my background. Lots of fun. And Candace Jedrowitz created a kinetic wall hanging. Now this is very easy to engineer so that these pieces turn around. And Candace always has so much fun with her crafting projects. It's always intriguing and something that I haven't tried before. And so inspiring. Love it. And I created mixed message buttons. This is a really quick and easy project where you can take stickers, Put them onto buttons, put some gloss sealer over the top, and you can give these as gifts. You can use these in your own creative projects. Mixed media. Have fun with your mixed media, mixed messages. Right. Before we say goodbye today, we do want to invite you to join us at Facebook. You will go to facebook.com slash cool to craft and like us and leave your comments about today's show. Let us know what you liked about today's show. And don't forget to go to shopcooltocraft.com because uh, some of the letters, I know you're going to want them to make your messages. If you haven't signed up yet, be sure and sign up for Almost Dailies. That is our insider club. We get to see all the mistakes that Heidi makes. <laughs> no, really, it's mistakes that I make. We both do. <laughs> or when we were just having fun. So it's a newsletter that we send out almost daily, <laughs> hence the name. And we share videos, behind the scenes photos, thoughts, ideas, nonsense, anything that we want to share with our Insider Club. Sometimes we even have guests in the studio. Yes, we have a guest today. Maybe we're going to have to photograph her. Yeah, I and think we are. Share. Yeah. We're not going to tell you who it is. <laughs> there was a panic look on her face. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you want to say something? Yes. <laughs> say, what do you want to say, Mom? <laughs> It's interesting watching you. It's like old times. Well, thanks, Mom. But, see, you won't be able to see her 
here you have to Go. subscribe to the Almost Dailies to see her. Yeah, right. It's a secret until you <laughs> subscribe. Because you have to be a member of the Insider Club. <laughs> but what you can also do is when you go to cooltocraft.com, you can sign up for the Cool to Craft Fave Crafts newsletter. Mm -hmm. And I am proud to announce we are expanding to two times a week. So in addition to the Tuesday newsletter, when you sign up, you also get news on Friday. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to put together all of our projects. What's great on Tuesdays is that when you're watching the show on Mondays, you just get your newsletter on Tuesday and it has all of the print instructions mm -hmm. for the projects that we show All the step-by-step -step photos and it's all written out because some people don't want to do the video. They don't want to watch the video. The video goes too fast or something. Well, why not? Say, why wouldn't they well, want to watch want to video? watch it to see how it's made, but when they, they actually sit down and they, want, they go, oh, that's step one, that's step two. I mean, I would do that too. And you know who insists that we do that is our sister Candace. Yeah, see? She has to print out her instructions. Yeah. She'd much prefer to do that. So we offer the print instructions and we take photos step by mm -hmm. step. Most of our projects have 10 to 20 photos in our step out. Mm -hmm. So you can watch us on video and watch our foolishness here, yes. or you can print us out. Also, one more thing, we would like to invite you to go just to cooltocraft.com. All kinds of cool ideas on there and archive shows, things that we've done in the past. It's all there. Are we finished with our messages for today? I think so. My message for you is I love my sister. I love my sister. Thanks for joining us. We will see you again next week here on Cool to Craft. Bye. Bye-bye.